Ever wondered what would happen if the beacon of hope, Deku, spiraled into darkness? Join us as we explore a chilling what-if scenario, delving into the depths of Deku's psyche as he confronts his worthlessness, transforming into the most formidable villain the world has ever known. I live in a wonderful and quite curious world, if you ask me. We all are born different from each other. Why? Do we grow two heads? Wings? Are we missing an eye? Well, that sounds pretty silly, but it's true. We all have peculiarities that make us different from one another. They're known as quirks, gifts, or simply powers, and they come in all sorts. As marvelous as it sounds, we're all born with powers. Or almost all of us. Before you ask, yes, heroes exist. Giants, small ones, muscular, and thin ones, of all sizes and shapes you can imagine. Normally, no one would have a problem with something like that because we live in a society full of heroes and people with incomparable powers. But there's a secret that everyone ignores. Everyone wants to maintain that precious facade that we live in a perfect world where everyone is happy, but I know the truth. Being loved in a world of heroes should be simple, right? Well, no, not everyone can be loved in the same way. It's simple logic. When I told you there are quirks of all kinds, I meant it. There are all sorts, from useful ones like shooting electricity or creating explosions with your sweat, to useless ones like popping your eyes out of their sockets or being able to stretch your neck. And that's it. But among them, there are people who are even less loved than those with useless quirks. Those are the ones who are born without one. Who would be unlucky enough to be born in a world with powers and not have one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce myself. I am that unlucky one, Izuku Midoriya. I tried to become a hero, but things didn't turn out as I thought. Ridiculous, right? A hero without powers. It just wasn't my destiny, but I refused to listen to what others told me. From my point of view, I had many options to become a hero, but as time passed, everything was changing. I ended up running out of options. This is the story of Izuku Midoriya, a young man who no matter how hard he tried, couldn't fulfill any of the requirements to become a hero or, at the very least, a respected person in the world. He was underestimated, used, and greatly underestimated. Normally, at the age of four, is when gifts start to manifest, but if the gift hasn't manifested in the child yet, the best thing parents can do is take their child to the doctor to check on their condition. This is exactly what Izuku and Izumi's mother, Inko Midoriya, did with her two children, Izuku, both twins, who had not yet awakened their gift. Your daughter is in very good health, ma'am, a doctor held up some x-rays in front of the family. Don't worry, it won't take long for her gift to awaken, it's just a matter of time. Did you hear that, Izuku? It won't take long. A little green-haired girl hugged her brother happily. Congratulations, sister. We'll soon be like All Might. The little one moved his head back and forth in a rather worrying manner. And my son? The green-haired woman looked at her little son happily moving in his chair, waiting for the same response. As I tell you. The mustached old man took more tests, your son won't have a gift. What? Inko looked surprised at the doctor, Izumi stayed completely silent with her mouth wide open, and Izuku. He was like stone, with a lost look in his eyes. Look, he put both siblings' tests together. Your daughter has only one joint in her little finger, but your son. He has two. The mother still couldn't believe what she was seeing. The doctor just nodded. Something like this is very rare, but not impossible. The doctor turned to look at the little one, his gaze shattered him. He didn't like giving bad news, especially to a child, but there was nothing else to do. I'm sorry, kid. Both his mother and sister hugged him while he just stood there, motionless, not knowing what to do. Should he give up? Support his sister? How would he tell his friends? So much to process for a single four-year-old. When he told his friends, he expected some support, to know that he still had them on his side as his dream began to crumble, but it was all in vain, as he received exactly the opposite treatment he expected. They mocked him, beat him up, humiliated him, and pushed him aside. As if they had never been friends. What he didn't know was that this was only the beginning of a life of misfortunes. When he turned eight years old, his father, Hasashi Midoriya, died in a plane accident while on his way to work abroad to provide a better quality of life for his family. Too bad that would never happen. Due to that accident, Inko had to work several jobs at once to bring some food to the table for her little ones, but at the same time, she neglected them without realizing it. But it didn't matter, as long as it was about them, everything was worth it. In the end, they were her motivation to keep going. The only person our little protagonist could trust was his older sister, 
if only for a few seconds. She was his confidant and best friend. Izumi had the pyrokinesis gift. With her ability, she tried her best to defend her brother from bullies. The best she could because unfortunately, she couldn't always be with him. She was always the opposite of Izuku after the news of her gift. She was quite cheerful, determined, intelligent, and kind. Many recognized these qualities in her, and she always received praise for her great gift. No one doubted she would become a fabulous hero. All the attention Izumi received was what Izuku needed and wanted. He just sought a little attention and maybe support for his dream of becoming a hero. Currently, both siblings are 14 years old and are in their last year of studies before moving on to more advanced classes. This was the key moment in both their lives, the moment when they could become great heroes. Or just become ordinary people. A beautiful day illuminated the Midoriya's house. Izumi, as the responsible sister, began to get up with a bit of annoyance, but it was something she had to do if they wanted to arrive on time. The young girl put on a bit of makeup, wore her black school uniform, adjusted her red ribbon, and put on her reliable pair of red boots that both siblings bought as a mutual gift for their birthday. When she finished all her preparations, she dashed to her twin brother's room, quite excited because they were only a few months away from fulfilling both their dreams of becoming heroes. Brother. The older green-haired girl knocked on her brother's door quite energetically. Wake up, we have to go to school. A few seconds passed, and she didn't receive any response, not even the classic grunt her brother gave her. Everything was silent. Izuku Midoriya. She knocked a little louder on the door. Don't make me wake you up with cold water again. Despite the threat and the louder knock, silence reigned again. Izumi gave up on that and entered her brother's room quite excited. The previous was just a childish threat, the truth was that she would never have the malice to do something like that to her brother. Her younger twin's room was a complete mess, all kinds of clothes on the floor, open notebooks scattered everywhere, the windows completely closed preventing the sun from doing its thing against him and a very neglected bed. Izumi approached her freckled brother happily just to take a big leap and fall on him quite excitedly. Get up, sleepyhead. The action by his sister pulled Izuku out of the dream world to drag him back to reality. It was a bad timing, he was about to save a child with his gift, which was being able to fly, well, he'll have better luck in the next dream. What's wrong with you, Izumi? Her brother held his stomach, exaggerating his sister's blow. I'm not that heavy. The freckled girl puffed her cheeks. For this occasion, I'll forgive you. Get up quickly, we have to have breakfast to go to school. Oh, that. Izuku averted his gaze while nervously scratching his neck. I don't think I'll go to school today. Good joke. Come on, breakfast is waiting for us. The green-haired girl walked calmly to the door, but a voice interrupted her. I'm serious, Izumi. Why don't you want to go? She saw the sad look in her brother's eyes and sighed. You shouldn't let those fools intimidate you. All Might would never let anyone make fun of him. But I'm not All Might. Yet, Izumi smiled calmly. If you can't go to school for yourself, do it for me. I don't want to go to school without you, I'll feel quite lonely. We both know that's a lie, you have many friends, the green-haired boy yawned tiredly. Those friends don't compare to the wonderful person my little brother is. You're worth a thousand times more than all of them combined. Hey, thanks, I needed to hear something like that, he gives her a smile. Well, leave my room, I need to put on the uniform and I can't do it if my sister is here watching me. Yes, sir. She strikes a small soldier pose and leaves the room, closing the door behind her. Going to school this day won't kill me. What I do for you, Izumi, after that thought. The green-haired boy calmly puts on his black school uniform and leaves his room for the kitchen, where his sister was already with two plates of food, some bread with butter, and cups of coffee for both of them. We all know destiny is a bitch to anyone, but with Izuku, well, with Izuku, it's a very, very special case. We're going to be late for class. Izumi nervously runs her hand through her hair. What had the green-haired girl so distressed was that a battle was unfolding in front of her and several other people. A villain had started an unnecessary riot at a train station, and some heroes had gone to stop him. Many looked at this as an everyday thing, others shouted and cheered for the wonderful heroes. But among them all, one stood out, another green-haired boy who radiated a unique aura as he excitedly watched the whole battle. Look, Izumi, that's Kamui Woods. Many say he could become the next All Might. Who cares? We're going to be late. Tears fell like waterfalls from her eyes. 
I don't think I've recorded him in my notebook. The younger green-haired boy quickly takes out his reliable hero analysis for the future number 13. It seems he can control the wood of his body at will. I wonder if he has any kind of limit. Will it hurt him if he extends his gift too much? All these words went straight into the notebook as he began his initial analysis. You really love heroes, don't you? A hooded young man looks at the scene calmly. Izumi hadn't seen him, she was just complaining in the background about villains and how they ruin people's everyday lives. Of course, I think they do a lot of noble actions. Why? What's that you have there? The hooded man turns a little, revealing to Izuku his hair color, which was a grayish blue, and what little he could see was that it was extremely unkempt. This? Oh, it's my hero analysis. It's number 13 because I've filled 12 notebooks completely. Here I put everything, drawings, notes, quirks of different heroes, and what I think could be weaknesses. Weaknesses? This last bit caught the thin man's curiosity. Yes, not all quirks are invincible, they must have some kind of limit, he pointed out calmly. Sounds quite interesting, the man looks away again at the fight. The unexpected appearance of Mount Lady ruined whatever he was doing. The heroes had won. The battle's over, nice meeting you. Izuku. Izuku Midoriya. He extends his hand. The grey-haired boy looks at the extended hand in front of him, ignores the greeting, and leaves the scene as if nothing happened. How rude. The green-haired boy huffs a bit annoyed, before he could do anything else, a hand grabbed him and began to drag him through the crowd. We're going to be late. Izumi had found her brother among the crowd and had taken him straight to school. There was nothing noteworthy at school, just a normal day overall. Izumi being praised for her excellent grades and her great gift, and Izuku. Well, let's just say it went well. He only received mockery about his lack of gift, fortunately, no one had hit him, or so he thought. When class ended, everyone went home. Izumi and Izuku were getting ready to leave for their home, but an unforeseen event arose. Oh, how silly of me, Izumi gives herself a little tap on the forehead. I forgot that I promised Futaba to finish the chemistry class team project. Izuku, I. Her brother raises his hand calmly. Go, Izumi. Your grades are quite important, they can't find out that the heroine fire star failed chemistry, he laughs a bit. That name is not official, I've told you before. A slight blush appeared on her cheeks, but then she smiled. All right, take care, okay? I'll be home by dinner. She gives him a small kiss on the cheek and leaves the place. Izuku's smile disappeared once his sister was out of his field of vision, replaced by a sad expression. No one had chosen him for the chemistry project, and therefore, he had to do it alone. He began his walk home with his gaze on the ground while thinking about different things. Was I destined to be a hero? For him, the answer was becoming increasingly difficult to say. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll analyze Kamui Wood's abilities first, then I'll worry about my career as a hero. The young man takes out his analysis as he observes the new notes he made about the wooden hero. But all his thoughts were interrupted by a young man with ash blonde hair and two other young men, all the same age as Izuku. Hey Deku. The ash blonde boy gave a cynical smile to the green haired one as he approached. H. Hey K. Kachan, the green haired boy began to tremble quite worriedly. Oh, look, Katsuki, his bodyguard isn't around him. It's our chance, one of the young men laughed quite amused. Without Izumi to look after him, he was an easy target, and everyone knows easy targets are the most fun of all. Well, well, well. Katsuki slammed his fist against his palm, and a small explosion formed in his hands. Looks like it's our lucky day, the trio of young men began to approach the green-haired boy. He didn't move, he was too scared to do anything. How did it go for the recruit? A deep voice came from one of the screens in a bar. Bad, master, a heroine arrived, and with just a kick, she defeated him. If that was all it took, then he didn't deserve to join the league, the grayish-blue-haired man stated calmly. Well, there will be more pawns for the future. Thanks for the report, Tomura. The voice bid farewell, and the television screen displayed no signal. Now known as Tomura, the man walked calmly through a bar that was currently the hideout of the League of Villains. He sat in front of the bar, quite pensive about everything that was happening, his master's plans, the failure of the league recruit, and that strange boy with, apparently, an analysis gift. Someone like him would be very useful for detecting the weaknesses of heroes. Including All Might. 
His thoughts were interrupted by knocks on the bar's entrance, damn it, come in. He growled annoyed. A middle-aged man entered with a huge smile on his face as he held a cigarette in his right hand. He had good news, that was for sure, but before he could speak, Tomer had decided to speak up. Did you do what I asked, Huron? Who do you think you're talking to, boss? Of course, I did, he places a small backpack on the bar counter, you're talking to the best of the best, a laugh came out of his mouth quite excitedly. Perfect. The thin man calmly puts his hand into the backpack and pulls out a notebook, being careful not to disintegrate it, hero analysis for the future, number four. A malicious smile spread across his face as he carefully opened the notebook and looked impressed at each and every one of Izuku's notes. They weren't simple notes as he thought, quite the opposite, they were extremely detailed notes and very good drawings to differentiate the data the notebook indicated about the hero's costumes. Izuku Midoriya, his smile widened, you will be of great use to us. After getting beaten up by his friends, Izuku ran home as fast as he could. If Izumi saw him in that state, definitely something would end up burnt. He reached home immediately, went straight to his room, leaving his things on the bed, and collapsed onto it. Dumb, does he feel so bad about himself that he has to hit someone weaker than him? Izuku pressed his face into the pillow, muffling a scream. He took a few minutes to calm down after that ordeal. He picked up his notebook number 13 and examined it. Its former neat state was gone, replaced by stains as if it had been burnt. Some pages were damaged, and the previous drawings were now just scribbles with ashes inside. It's okay, I can always make another one, he sighed. I think I'll read a bit to calm down. He opened the drawer of his bedside table where the rest of his analyses were kept to see what he could improve on them. What? What surprised our favorite green-haired boy was the absence of his notebooks. That wasn't possible, he had them well guarded. They were, along with his collection of All Might things, his most valuable possessions. His sister and mother knew it very well. So where were they? Kachan. Izuku grumbled annoyed as he clenched his fists angrily. He could forgive many things to his best friend, but this was crossing the line. He invaded his home and stole his notebooks as if it were nothing. He's probably planning some stupid prank as always, he thought before deciding to sleep. After all, he lost his appetite after the beating earlier that evening. The green-haired boy was now writing in a new notebook labeled Superhero Analysis for the Future No. 1. He wouldn't give up easily no matter how many notebooks they tried to steal or destroy. He would always be there to make more, it was his hobby and a way to be close to his idols. At this rate, the next analyzes will say Ultra, he chuckled softly at the idea of his notebooks being stolen again. Hey, nerd. An annoying shout rang out near him, Katsuki approaching with a huge grin. W what do you want, K Kachan? Izuku tried his best to look confident but failed miserably. Are you still doing this crap? Katsuki snatched the notebook effortlessly. Aren't you tired of doing this kind of crap? I it's not crap. Izuku attempted to stand up to take back the notebook, but a punch to the stomach stopped him. It seems you haven't understood your position, Katsuki's serious eyes fixed on his childhood friend. To show that I'm a generous hero, I won't destroy this notebook. H hero? Izuku tried to regulate his breathing, that punch had knocked the air out of him completely. Sure, at least the goal sounds realistic to me, Katsuki mocked calmly as he took out a marker. I won't destroy it, but I'll definitely make some adjustments that you'll love. After making some scratches on the notebook cover, he dropped it to the floor as if it were nothing. There, now your notebook is perfect, he chuckled loudly. Izuku hesitantly picked up the notebook, observing Katsuki's adjustments. Where the notebook title had been, there was now a huge black scratch, and below it, only the word suicide. Was written in capital letters. Why would you write something like this? Fear was evident on Midoriya's face. Kachan, you can't. Another punch, but this time to the face, interrupted him. What did you call me, damn Deku? Katsuki suddenly lifted him, grabbing his uniform collar. I I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Izuku frantically moved his hands, scared. You better not, Katsuki let him go, leaving the boy frightened. Stay out of my sight, and what I wrote isn't just a word, it's advice. Advice? Yeah, maybe if you kill yourself in the next life, you'll get a quirk, he laughed, leaving the place. I idiot. The green-haired boy whispered as he picked up his notebook though he wouldn't admit it, those words stuck in his mind. He couldn't stop thinking about it. Was he right? Should he try it? All his problems would disappear as if nothing happened, and maybe, with some luck, he would have a quirk. 
he mechanically walked through the school, thinking about everything his friend had said to him. But those thoughts vanished when he saw the door leading to the school roof. Fortunately, it was locked. What am I thinking? Izuku shook his head to rid himself of those thoughts. It wasn't all bad for him, he had a sister who loved him, the support of his mother who gave him all the love a mother could give to a child, he didn't have many friends, but he knew the few he had were people who would truly appreciate and love him with all their heart. He wasn't entirely lost. It doesn't matter, I'll show that fool what a real hero is. He took a deep breath and left the place they were in, anyway, he had to continue with his classes. Classes had ended completely, and our green-haired protagonist was walking alone through the streets of his city, feeling a bit unsure. Apart from what Katsuki did to him, he hadn't truly had a bad day. I guess I shouldn't have told Izumi to go out with her friends, he sighed resignedly. But she looked happy with them, so it's okay for me, he smiled a little. Since it became known that Izuku didn't have a quirk and everyone started treating him poorly, Izumi tried to defend him from any bully who approached him. But that also had some repercussions on her, she didn't have many friends until her younger brother insisted that she should make more friends outside of him. If one of them could have a normal life, it would definitely be her. I have to work hard on my grades if I want to reach the same number of notebooks, he raised his fist excitedly. No one will stop me from becoming A, his words of encouragement were interrupted by a hand that quickly led him into an alley. One wrong move and I'll disintegrate you, the voice sounded familiar to the green-haired boy, he swore he heard it somewhere before. Blink once if you understand. Izuku obeyed and blinked once, the man let him go. W who are you? He nervously swallowed, the person in front of him had a hand on their face, covering it. The green-haired boy searched for a way to escape, but found none. Where were the heroes when they were needed? Wait, you're the man who was watching the fight at the train station. Despite not seeing his face, that hair color was unmistakable. Sorry for getting your attention like this, I just came to return this to you, the gray-haired guy handed him a backpack. W what is this? Izuku took the backpack a bit unsure. The man just shrugged, he wouldn't be easy to talk to. Izuku opened the backpack and saw that it contained several notebooks. He smiled happily, they were his original analyzes, but all that happiness was abruptly interrupted when he understood everything. You broke into my house and stole my notebooks. He pointed at him nervously. Guilty, he raised his hands as if it were nothing. When you said they were just simple notes, I believed you, but these notebooks contain more information than just simple notes. Wait. You don't find them silly? He looked at him incredulously. Why would they be? They're quite useful, especially for what I do, although not visible, he had a huge smile. I, wow, well, I don't know what to say, he was a little embarrassed and nervous, it was the first time someone outside of his mother or sister had said something like that to him. Let's get straight to the point, I didn't search for you all over the city just to return your notes. You have a gift that would be very useful to me and my group. A gift? Excuse me for bursting your bubble, but I don't have any gift, Izuku turned his gaze worriedly. You do, he said matter-of-factly, leaning against a wall of the alley. What? How do you know? For now, how I found out doesn't matter, what matters is that you do, Izuku could swear he saw a red glint on the man's face. Your name is Izuku Midoriya, and you have a twin sister named Izumi. Izuku was now even more nervous, this guy knew his brother and probably his mother too. If he said or did something that could upset that man, his family could be in danger, he couldn't allow that. At the age of four, you were told that you couldn't have a quirk. Since then, you've been living in the shadow of your sister and suffering abuse from society because of your lack of quirk. Why are you telling me all this? Although everything the man with the hand on his face was saying was true, he didn't want to remember it for anything in the world. Because I know how it feels, he said calmly. Wait, you understand me? But if you have a gift. I don't understand you in that sense, I mean that I understand when society turns its back on you for something you simply didn't choose, when you think you have many options, but this same thing takes them away from you. Something you didn't choose. Izuku pondered those words, the slim man spoke again. For the rest of the people, we're like a zero on the left, they don't care about us, and they definitely don't worry about us. But at least I already feel tired. Do you know what happens when those zeros on the left come together? Technically, nothing would happen, zero plus zero still equals zero, Izuku pointed out innocently. You take everything so literally, don't you? The man scratched his neck a bit. Seeing an opportunity to escape as the grey-haired man seemed distracted for a moment, he decided to run away from him, only to collide with a strange mist with yellow eyes. Be careful with the people in front of you, young Midoriya. Who are you? He tried to distance himself from the mist, 
crawling on the ground. Relax, we don't plan on hurting you, the man with the hand on his face intervened. My name is Tomura Shigaraki. Izuku looked at the man with a puzzled expression. And I am a villain. Midoriya's previously confused face suddenly turned into a grimace of fear and concern. Did he hear correctly? He was talking to villains. He didn't know what to say. If that guy scared him with that discovery before, now he was extremely terrified. Fear paralyzed him, not allowing him to form any words. And we want you to join us, Tomura declared, looking at the green-haired boy. What? Another day, another headache. Were Inko Midoriya's words as she returned from her job as a domestic worker for one of the most important families in all of Japan. After her work, she went to buy the groceries necessary to feed her children and returned home. For her, arriving tired at her home had become an everyday thing, and her dark circle showed it. Her appearance still remained slender, and her green hair was well cared for. Her routine was simple, wake up, go to work at the Yaoyorozu mansion for many hours, and come back home to sleep directly. Sometimes her routine had small changes, for example, buying things for dinner or chatting a bit with her children at dinner time. She always worked very hard in everything she set out to do. After Hisashi's death, she couldn't afford to give less than 100% in everything she did. She got a job as a waitress in a small restaurant, and after the managers discovered her great cooking skills, she was promoted to that position. Through recommendations, she ended up as a domestic worker for the Yaoyorozu family. She was usually in charge of the kitchen and feeding the wealthy family. Her dishes were among the best, and she was always considered for small buffets or business meetings of the rich family. All the effort was definitely worth it. But even though things were going well for her at work, she couldn't say the same about her relationship with her children. Money doesn't grow on trees, and she needed to pay the bills and some debts that her husband left before he died. She hardly spoke with her children and sometimes even felt alienated from them. The thought simply crushed her. After a big sigh of relief for being in her home, she decided to speak. Izuku. Izumi. I'm home. She left the grocery bags on the floor as she stretched in relief. No one responded. There was no characteristic joy from Izumi or Izuku's endless whispers in that home. Izumi is probably with her friends, and Izuku. Oh my god, Izuku. The mother rushed from the entrance of the house straight to her son's room. While she didn't have the best relationship with her children, it wasn't a bad connection among the three. She loved them both equally, but she wasn't stupid either. It wasn't normal for the excitement and sparkle in her son's face to disappear over time. Izuku. Hi it's me, mom. The green-haired mother touched the door worriedly, receiving no response. Then I'll use my authority as a mother. Scared, she opened the door, but only saw the room in a mess, something already characteristic of her son, but she didn't see him, so she felt relieved. The noise of the front door opening caught her attention, and she rushed to the entrance. Izumi, your brother, her screams and tears were abruptly interrupted when she noticed it wasn't Izumi but her son, Izuku. Oh, hi mom, he gave a small smile. Why are you crying? Did you get fired? And no, it's not that, she wiped her tears relieved. It's just that. I'm glad you're okay. I'm already here, you don't have to be scared, remembering his idol's words, he hugged his mother and she reciprocated. Hey, you smell strange, she began to sniff the air more attentively. Hamburger? Yeah, I didn't have money to eat a plate of katsudon, he laughed, scratching his neck. Sorry for being late. I guess you're not going to want dinner then, right? I'm not hungry, but I can accompany you so you're not alone, he smiled. Thank you very much, Inko took her son's arm, and they both walked to the kitchen. The dinner between mother and son wasn't anything special, just some small conversations without any importance. Izuku gave evasive answers to his mother when she asked about Bakugo or his situation at school. She could get an idea of what her son was experiencing, but she didn't plan on pressuring him. She didn't see it as necessary. Now I regret eating that hamburger, your cooking looked delicious, mom, he chuckled a bit and got up from the table. I, I can prepare you a plate if you'd like. We still have a lot to talk about, she offered. It's not necessary. Besides, I have to go to school tomorrow. We had a class about the future today, he fell silent for a moment. And I need to think about my options, he smiled a bit and walked away. Izuku, wait. Inko swallowed nervously, that was exactly what she wanted to talk about. Yes? Her son's gaze met hers. I. Well. I, I love you with all my heart, she smiled nervously. I love you too, mom, he left the kitchen with a smile. Izuku but the sound of a closing door didn't allow her to continue. 
Darn it, Inko, why don't you ask him about the school he wants to attend? That was Matriarch Midoriya's thought, but she knew well the answer. Of course, I know why I don't ask him. I, I don't want to tell him he can't go to a hero school. Why you're so pathetic, Inko. She berated herself. I don't have the heart to do something like that to my son. The green-haired boy looked at the backpack Tomura had returned to him along with all his analysis notebooks. He still couldn't believe everything he had experienced in just one day. He talked to two villains, and they offered him to join them. Although he wouldn't say it out loud for obvious reasons. What should I do? Were the thoughts running through his mind as he remembered the conversation he had with Tomura and that thing? Flashback. Izuku kept repeating the same word over and over again, what? Looking at no one in particular, it seemed the offer still had him shocked. Do you think you were too direct with the kid? The mist observed the green-haired boy. How does that thing even talk? Izuku pointed at the purple mist, scared. This thing has feelings. It answered calmly, though it wouldn't admit it, being called a thing hurt. My name is Kurogiri, pleased to meet you, it extended a fuzzy hand through the mist. I Izuku Midoriya. He nervously reciprocated the greeting, but something from the previous conversation pulled him out of his thoughts. Wait, he turned his gaze to Tomura, you said I had a gift, what did you mean exactly? We know you don't have a quirk, the mist spoke for its boss, what we meant was your analytical ability. It's quite outstanding, young Midoriya, not everyone has that capability, especially not at the level you have. Ah. Uh, th, thanks, he whispered embarrassedly, I think. He thought. Well, enough with the flattery, Tomura intervened, that ability for us could be key to understanding our opponent's weaknesses in an instant. So, will you join us? I, well, if you've been investigating me, you'll know that my dream is to become a hero. I think you chose the worst bitter possible to become a villain, he mentioned nervously. Quite the opposite, we believe you're one of the best candidates to become a villain, Kurogiri pointed out. Why should I? What you do goes against everything I believe in. Do you really think that rotten society will accept you as a hero without a quirk? What more proof do you need? Your whole life has been hell because of it. What guarantees me that it won't be the same with you? We value your abilities regardless of whether you have a quirk or not. We told you that what seems most useful about you is your analytical ability. From our side, you could be someone important, a key piece on this huge chessboard. But if you continue on the hero's side, you'll just be another pawn for them. Do you really want that? Tomura began to lose patience, he knew convincing the boy would be difficult, but he never thought it would be this hard. I can do better, maybe I can become any chess piece myself. A vigilante? Kurogiri looked surprised at the freckled green-haired boy. Although it wasn't noticeable, Shigaraki had a huge smile. You know that if you become a vigilante, the heroes and the government will consider you one of us, right? What? Izuku's eyes widened in shock. Society doesn't care if you do good or bad everything is black or white, anyway you'll end up in jail, no matter what you do. Tomura was going to continue, but Kurogiri interrupts him. We'll give you time to think about it, okay? Kurogiri began to expand and turned into a portal. We'll come back tomorrow for the answer, if it serves as an incentive for you, you could win a quirk if you give us the correct answer. And just as they arrived, they disappeared from the place. A quirk? That got Izuku thinking, were they offering him a gift? Was it possible? Why didn't anyone tell him? He could have avoided years of teasing and mistreatment, some villains were believing in him, he couldn't even believe all of that himself. Flashback ends. I won't dwell on it anymore, I'll just tell them no. The green-haired boy sighs a bit and puts on his pajamas to go to sleep, he was sure tomorrow would be a great day, his instincts told him so. What our freckled protagonist doesn't know is that those words were heard by both villains. The kid seems determined to refuse, we won't be able to do anything to convince him otherwise. When your opinion means All Might's death, then you can give it to me, Tomura scratched his neck quite annoyed. I've already told you it's not good to rush completely into the plans, it was better to try to slowly persuade him to join us. We have very little time now, we have to hurry things if we want another infiltrator in UA. What makes you think that when he gets his quirk he won't betray us? The mist had a point in its favor. Both heroes and villains have one thing in common, it's not the quirks that keep us on the same level it's the motivations, he lets go of his neck revealing some marks and a bit of blood, right now the kid is hero motivations, what he needs is a villain motivation. And how will we give him that motivation? Kurogiri watched his boss expectantly. Tomorrow, we will help him have that motivation. And without further words, both villains leave the place.
a new day had arrived in the land of the rising sun, Japan. Many people got up to start their usual activities. Little birds chirped happily, and flowers began to bloom. It was a magnificent day. But wait, wrong franchise. While it was a normal morning for everyone else, it was different for our green-haired friend. He had woken up too early, something he hadn't done well in years. It seemed that talking to more people about his problems, besides his family, had helped him a lot. These people who had talked to him, who had told him he was useful, who hadn't ignored him, were Tomura and Kurogiri, both villains. Yes, our aspiring hero had felt comfortable talking to villains, which for him was unthinkable. Not even in his wildest dreams could he have imagined something like that. His wildest dream had been one where All Might had somehow given him his powers. Izuku got up and stretched, ready for another day of school. He noticed that this time his sister Izumi hadn't gotten up first. He had beaten Izumi this time. I beat Izumi. The green-haired boy looked at the time, surprised. I knew it. I knew everything was going to get better today. Even though it might not seem like much to others, for him, it was a victory and a sign that everything was improving. Excited, the green-haired boy got up, prepared the classic Midoriya family breakfast, and patiently waited for his sister while eating a little. Izuku. A knock on his door interrupted his thoughts. Get up, we have to go to school. I'm already up, Izumi. A big smile of excitement spread across the younger green-haired boy's face as he saw his sister run to the kitchen, surprised. You beat me in waking up? His sister's jaw dropped in surprise. I made you breakfast, I hope you like it. For the first time in a long time, Izuku's eyes were very bright, as if the news that he didn't have a quirk had never existed. You seem very excited, I'm glad to see you like this. Izumi sat next to her brother and began to eat. Maybe everything is starting to get better for me. Izuku looked at his coffee, quite excited. It all starts with small victories. That's the spirit, little brother. She tousled her freckled brother's hair even more. I'm still embarrassed. Blushing, he moved away from his sister. Both shared a smile for what they were experiencing now, decided not to delay any longer, and finished their breakfast to go straight to school. Someone stopped that thief. A frightened woman pointed at a strange creature made of some kind of slime. He stole my purse. The thief just ran as fast as possible. Everyone looked at him in fear, no one could intervene to help the woman. Try to catch me if you can, idiots. Others, on the other hand, were quite calm about the situation. They blindly trusted the heroes and that they would always be there to help them. Well, I guess there are people who don't know what to do with their gift. A man with black hair shrugged calmly. We have to wait for the heroes, they shouldn't take long to come. A calm redhead pointed out, despite having witnessed a robbery. The villains keep coming out, it seems they'll never stop doing evil. All this commotion was seen by only one person. He had a bag with some groceries. He didn't need to ask what was going on because he was already watching everything, and it was his time to act. Of course, they'll stop doing evil. A muscular man stood out from the crowd, and they looked at him in amazement. Because I am here. When I tell mom, she'll throw a huge party. The green-haired boy walked excitedly with his sister, they were about to reach their school, just needed to pass under a bridge, easy, right? Don't you think you're exaggerating a bit? Izumi laughed at her brother's excited attitude. Maybe she'll just congratulate you for waking up earlier than me. It won't be like that. In fact, I'll ask her to start making my hero costume. He took out his notebook burned by Bakugo and showed Izumi a drawing. It will be spectacular, I assure you. That's what's great about you, Izuku. The green-haired girl looked ahead. Even though many have told you that you can't become a hero, you're out there fighting without stopping, although I'll say it again, you just woke up earlier than me, she laughed a little. That's how we all start. First, it's beating you and waking up, then it's improving my abilities to finally be able to enter, he couldn't finish his sentence because of a puddle of drool on the floor. Oh, gross. Izumi trembled nervously as she saw the liquid. Someone should fix the drainage in this city. She complained irritably. What both of them didn't know was that the slime was starting to gather closer and closer to Izuku, preventing him from moving. I Izumi, help. He tried to reach his sister without success, feeling the villain trying to enter his body through his mouth. H brother. Izumi wanted to use her fire quirk, but they were in a very confined area. Stay away from him, villain. Her hand ignited threateningly. I wouldn't recommend it, little girl. If you launch that attack, you might hit this brat too. The villain mocked. After all, he was right. I won't let you harm him. Izumi tried to separate the slime from her brother, but she was unsuccessful. You can't grab me. 
My quirk is amorphous. The villain, on the other hand, formed a whip of slime and launched it directly at the freckled girl's neck, starting to strangle her mercilessly. Aizumi. The green-haired boy's thoughts were about his sister. He felt life slipping away, unable to do anything, unable to save her. What a worthless hero he turned out to be. Calm down, kid, this will only hurt you for about. 25 seconds? I'd say 45, but it's been a while since then. The slime villain taunted. You're my hero. Thank you so much, kind hero. Izuku's vision began to blur as he watched Izumi struggle with the whip without success. His notebook fell, and he managed to see his future hero costume, a costume he would never wear. Don't worry, young ones. The manhole suddenly lifted, revealing Japan's number one hero. I am here. The amorphous villain looked scared at the muscular hero. He didn't know what to do now, all he could do was face his fate. Unfortunately, it wasn't a pretty one. Texas Smash. A strong gust of wind was enough to get rid of the villain and save both Izuku and Izumi from its clutches. Both green-haired siblings fell unconscious to the ground. Hey, hey! The hero gently tapped Izuku's face several times, concerned. Huh? What happened? His vision began to focus on two figures in front of him. Brother, you won't believe who we're with, Izumi was abruptly interrupted by her brother's shout. A All Might. The green-haired boy pointed at his greatest inspiration and idol. Of course, it's me. The hero laughed heartily as he helped the young man to his feet. W wait, I need two, All Might cut him off. Don't worry, kid, I've already done it. He raised his thumb in approval. Izumi handed her brother the notebook with the word All Might on both pages. Izuku didn't faint from excitement by sheer force of will. T thank you so much. I'll cherish it with my life and make sure my children and their children pray to this notebook forever. Izuku bowed deeply. B brother, I think you're exaggerating a bit, Izumi scratched her cheek nervously. You did the job, we just gave you the time, Izumi smiled embarrassedly. Not every day did the world's greatest hero congratulate her. I hope to have your support in the future. All Might did a squat, about to leave. Many thoughts crossed Izuku's mind. This was a golden opportunity. He couldn't waste it, he had to ask his question. In an inhumanly swift movement, he grabbed the muscular hero by one of his legs and leapt, taking him with him. Izuku. His sister tried to stop him but failed and was left completely alone. Now what do I do? She ran her fingers through her hair nervously. Kid, what do you think you're doing? The hero looked at the freckled boy gripping his leg tightly. I, I need to ask something. Izuku spoke with difficulty, after all, he was being subjected to great speeds for a normal person. Then hold on tight, kid. Unnoticed by the green-haired boy, All Might began to cough, his time was running out. Both men had landed on the terrace of a building. Izuku was starting to recover from the turbulent ride while All Might complained in the background about the time he didn't have. The number one hero was a very busy person or so he wanted to show the young man. See can I ask you something? Izuku looked away nervously. I can't, I don't have time, young man. All Might tried to maintain his transformation as best he could. It was now or never. If Izuku obeyed All Might, he would be left with that doubt about the quirk forever, and if he asked, there was no guarantee of a good answer. Can someone without a quirk become a hero? The green-haired boy looked at the ground. See can someone like me become someone like you in the future? All Might was about to speak, but a trickle of blood coming from his mouth completely prevented him. His time had run out, and he was covered in smoke. Midoriya still looked at the ground, so he continued speaking. E well, you see, I don't have any quirk, and everyone makes fun of me. I don't understand why they do. Shouldn't we all support each other if we have a common goal? He hoped for some kind of response, but not receiving one, he assumed that All Might had left, so he decided to speak to himself. I would like to be a hero like you, to save everyone with a smile, to be as legendary as. What? Izuku's eyes turned completely white from the shock. In front of him was no longer All Might, just a rather emaciated and thin man. A hey, are you an imposter? I am the real All Might. A bit of blood came out of his mouth. Izuku couldn't believe it, that imposing hero was actually a rather weak man. I see. Izuku swallowed nervously. I ask you, not as a hero, but as a person, don't tell anyone, please. The blonde man looked directly into the green-haired boy's eyes. I promise. Trying to dispel the discomfort, Izuku decided to insist on his question, A about my question. Answering your question. It's very difficult to save people when you can't save yourself. 
the world of heroes is full of dangers, you and your sister experienced that firsthand. The hero looked at the bottle with the villain inside. It's noble what you're trying to do, but I'll be frank, no, you can't be a hero if you don't have a quirk. Izuku was devastated. His greatest idol, inspiration not to give up, and role model had bluntly told him that he could never be a hero, no matter what he tried. Everyone, even the number one hero, had turned their backs on him. I understand. Izuku responded mechanically. A hero's job is to protect people. Believe it or not, I'm protecting you from something that might very well kill you. All Might sighed as he looked at the young man without moving. But if you still insist on saving people, you can always become a police officer. People usually make fun of them for cleaning up the messes of heroes, but it's an honorable job in my opinion. I understand. He replied again and left the terrace, T thank you for your time. I won't bother you anymore. All Might sighed and looked up at the sky, thinking about how much the boy resembled his younger self, but he had to understand the dangers heroes face. Probably, Nana would kill me if she found out about this, he sighed a little tiredly and got up, thinking about his teacher helped him better reflect on things. I'll apologize to him after I take this guy to jail, he watched the villain move inside the bottle. The freckled boy walked through the streets of the city towards his school, quite dazed. He was doing his best to hold back his tears, but he was unsuccessful, and people around him began to look at him with pity. Poor kid, his girlfriend probably left him. Maybe he failed a subject at school. Did he lose a loved one? These were all the words of the people around him who saw him crying, but Izuku paid them no mind. He was more absorbed in his thoughts than he had ever been before. W why the hell am I CR crying? It's my fault in the end. I was the fool who never listened to others. The fool who kept insisting on being a hero, he sighed resignedly and wiped his tears. He managed to see the school gates in the distance and his sister Izumi waiting for him. Both greeted each other and entered the school. Izumi noticed the change in her brother's attitude but decided not to intervene. It was probably painful for him, and he probably didn't want to remember it. You know there will be a lot of collateral damage, right? Kurogiri observed his boss as impassive as ever. I know very well. Look on the bright side, we end up winning. If the kid survives, we gain a valuable ally in our ranks. Flashback. I consider this a bit unnecessary, Kurogiri pointed calmly, looking at some plans with Tomura. Let the heroes clean up the mess, he observed the plans of the school Izuku attended. All right, I just have to disintegrate some key points of the structure and leave the most important parts so that everything doesn't collapse when they step into the school. He began to scratch his neck furiously. This plan won't be as simple as you thought, Kurogiri calmly highlighted. TSK, whatever. We'll do the kid a favor and gain a great analyst for the league, that's all that matters. Besides, this school is pretty ugly. End of the flashback. What if the boy doesn't make it? The purple fog watched the huge school, focusing on the small marks Tomura made on the structure. Well, at least we'll have a nice show their smile widens a bit as they look at the school. After a fairly normal day of classes, Izuku and Izumi were walking through the halls. Izuku's mood was worse than usual. Izumi noticed that the faint sparkle in her brother's eyes had completely disappeared, and she could see some swelling in his eyes. He had definitely been crying. She had to find something to cheer him up, but she didn't know what to do. Whatever happened, we'll get through it together, okay? We're a team, don't forget that she gives him a smile, and her brother just nods. Izuku seemed lost in thought, All Might's words still echoing in his head. He had completely lost his way, his purpose, and his goals had been destroyed. Definitely, nothing could make things worse now. I know what'll lift your spirits. Let's go get some katsudon. Your day started off well, I won't let it end badly she stops abruptly darn it, I forgot to tell Mr. Amami that he didn't collect my essay. She pouts. Go ahead, I'll wait for you Izuku looks his sister in the eyes for the first time since they met at school. She just nods and leaves in a hurry, leaving the green-haired boy completely alone. Or so he thought. Hey, stupid Deku. Bakugo watched as Izumi walked away from her brother, leaving him free to bother him again. Just what I needed, thought the green-haired boy, annoyed. H. Hey Kachan. A look of death appeared on the ash blonde's face, remembering how he had been called I mean, K. Katsuki. That's more like it. Remember your place, Trashy gives him a smile I hope you're not thinking of going to UA to make a fool of yourself. I already have enough with your stupid sister in my way, I don't need you joining her. D don't worry about me. I won't go to UA I'll look at other options. The freckled boy had a distant look. Bakugo noticed this but decided to ignore it. 
who would have thought the day would finally come when you accept the damn reality he laughs just the thought of the crap you'll become in the future makes me laugh even more. In the end, trash will always be trash. I I think I'll wait for Izumi at the entrance. Muttered Izuku, angry at his friend's insults, and began to leave the hallway, only for Bakugo to stop him by putting his hand on his shoulder. Where do you think you're going, nerd? Bakugo's hand began to generate some heat, burning the green-haired boy's shoulder. Before Midoriya could say anything, a small piece of debris hit the ash blonde on the head, knocking him unconscious. Izuku looked up and saw cracks beginning to spread throughout the school and the structure starting to tremble, everything was falling apart. H help! Izuku fell to the ground due to the shaking of the structure, and a small piece of debris landed on his leg, injuring it slightly, preventing him from getting up again. Even after everything, he thought this was a perfect opportunity, he could try to be a hero. If he survived this, he would prove all might wrong. Izuku tried to reach Bakugo, the ash blonde had some blood coming out of his head. Get up. His eyes began to water, he could die at any moment, but he would try to save Kachan. After all, that's what heroes do, right? Twice, he had been close to death twice in one day, but this time he would try to do something and not just stand still. Unfortunately, his leg didn't share the same enthusiasm. Izuku. His sister's familiar voice reached the green-haired boy's ears, and he saw his savior, or so he thought. Izumi. The young boy tried his best to drag Katsuki's unconscious body so they could both reach his sister and she could save them K. Kachan is unconscious, and I think my leg is broken. H. Help. The freckled boy nodded nervously at the situation, nerves prevented her from acting properly, and she took Bakugo, who was closer to where she was. W. Wait. Izuku was in shock, his sister had taken the cause of most of his misfortunes without even thinking twice. Before Izumi could go for her brother to save him, the ground under Izuku opened up, and he fell into the void. B. Brother. The green-haired girl cried desperately as she saw the huge hole where her brother had fallen, but there was no time to cry. An adult took Izumi's wrist, and they began to escape from the place with Bakugo still unconscious. Izuku's only thought was how his sister had chosen his bully over him, her own brother, her own blood. Anyone who had the chance would abandon him, before feeling the impact of the fall and the debris crushing him, a purple portal opened right beneath him, saving him. The heroes have arrived. Quick, everyone, help. Some police officers arrived at the scene and started clearing away all the debris quickly with the help of some heroes. What happened here? All Might had arrived at the school, his main objective was to apologize to the freckled boy and perhaps talk a little about the options for becoming a hero. But he never thought that the young man he was looking for was no longer among them. The last thing he had talked about with him was how his dreams had been mercilessly destroyed by the symbol of peace, the number one hero. Why didn't he have hoped that the boy was still alive? Because of the heartbreaking scream of anguish and pain coming from a green-haired girl in front of the entire now ruined school. I honestly didn't expect a reaction like this Tomura was carefully holding a cup of coffee on the beverage counter. You again? Izuku struggled to get up. Upon closer inspection of his surroundings, all he could see was a rather clean bar. How do you feel, young Midoriya? Kurogiri was standing beside the green-haired boy, looking at him with those yellow eyes. I I. I don't know. Izuku was still analyzing everything around him happy to survive, disappointed by All Might's words, furious with Izumi's actions, what exactly should I feel? Your own sister betrayed you, didn't she? Tomura passed a cup of coffee to the freckled boy, surprising Kurogiri with this action, although he didn't show it. He's persuading him, was the thought of the purple fog, apparently Tomura had remembered his words before. T there must be an explanation. It's not possible that she chose Bakugo over her own brother. His hands were trembling, and the coffee was spilling. The floor. Tomura looked annoyed at the coffee stains on the bar floor. Oh, the irony. Well, let me inform you that she did, young Midoriya. You wouldn't be here if she had chosen you, right? Kurogiri walked over to a door to grab a mop. I, I don't know what to do anymore. Izuku started crying in despair why the heck did you rescue me? It would have been better if you had let me die. His voice broke, there was nothing left to fight for. I told you it would work Tomura pointed calmly as the desperate look on the green-haired boy's face turned into one of surprise. Did you cause the collapse? He clenched his fists why did you do it? Don't yell at me. Tomura disintegrated the coffee cup he was holding and approached Izuku threateningly, all the anger the freckled boy had felt was replaced by fear I did it to prove a point. A point? He whispered with Tomura in front of him. People show their true colors when they're about to die. 
You did, you tried to defend that jerk even after everything he did to you the grey-haired boy pointed calmly dash. Something worthy of a. Hero. He said the last word with disgust. I I guess. He lowered his gaze. But your sister as well, choosing to save you, the person she grew up with, the one she shared so many beautiful moments with, she left you for the guy who practically made your life impossible. Just remembering the moment filled Izuku with rage, but he could never be angry with his sister even after everything that happened. He wasn't like that. Or was he? You, the boy who just wanted to save others, who only needed a chance to prove his worth, were betrayed at your greatest time of need. Where goes the clean floor? Kurogiri commented calmly, watching how he would have to mop the floor again. The rest of society took away your options, they told you that you weren't useful, they emphasized over and over again that you were practically worthless. You could be a vigilante, but to others, you'll be a villain. It's as if destiny hated you, no matter which path you choose, you're destined to fail, aren't you? Izuku cried bitterly, every word from Tomura was true, and now he was facing his destiny. Perhaps following Bakugo's advice wasn't such a bad idea after all. Dying at the hands of a villain was better than nothing. I could end your suffering right now, you know? Tomura slowly reached his hand towards Izuku, who only looked at it with fear but didn't do anything to stop it. Izuku accepted his fate. His sister had chosen Bakugo over him, and his life had been full of misfortune since he was four years old. He had always been in his sister's shadow in every possible way. It simply couldn't get any worse. But I won't do it Tomura withdrew his hand, confusing the green-haired boy. Why? Why don't you kill me? Unlike others, you're quite useful to us. You're a great analyst, and I see potential in you. Besides, I promised you a gift if you joined us a huge smile spread across his face dash. Perhaps destiny denied you the chance to be a hero. Izuku couldn't believe everything Tomura was telling him. Even though he was still kneeling, he began to tremble as he continued to hold his chest. More tears streamed from his green eyes. For a moment, he remembered what his mother and sister used to say to him so often, I'm so sorry. But you can be a villain Tomura finished calmly. Izuku could only scream and cry uncontrollably. Someone believed in him, they truly trusted him and thought he was useful because of his abilities, not out of pity. In that moment, the world changed, and no one had realized it. That day, the school was completely destroyed. According to many architects, it was due to strange materials of poor quality and negligence on the part of the school, which refused to repair them. The school insisted they had never had these problems, but no one believed them. The collapse claimed the lives of approximately 20 people at the site, with the most notable being the name of 14-year-old Izuku Mitoriya. When all the debris was cleared, they saw the bodies there, including that of the green-haired boy. He was unrecognizable, the weight of the debris had completely crushed his body. The only thing that made him recognizable to his sister and mother was his characteristic green hair. Now, all that was left to do was to prepare the autopsy report. That day, Izuku Mitoriya, the hero enthusiast, died for everyone. But for the villains, a new Izuku Midoriya stood before them.